All right, I have several programs open here. Uh, my goal is to work with my students interactively while I'm teaching. So I'll be teaching within the workspace software, which comes with the Mobi. So it's like a, I'm using it as a whiteboard, an interactive whiteboard. And then I also have the CPS Pulse software, which are the clickers that students have in their hands. So I've got that software open. So at the beginning of class, what I would do, so that I don't have to create anything in advance, is I would open up the CPS software, and I would hit Engage. What that does for me is it just puts it into verbal mode. And verbal mode is a way for me just to randomly ask my students any questions that I want to as I go. So what happened now, if you look at the screen, is CPS Pulse software goes away and leaves me with this toolbar right here. So I can just ask verbal questions whenever I want to. So that just stays anywhere I want on my whiteboard space. My whiteboard space is my workspace, my, my uh, e-instruction workspace. This is my toolbar. There's many different toolbars you can choose from. I'm looking at the advanced version of the toolbar. So at this point, I would be ready to start my class. So my students would come in, they would pick up their clickers. I would ask them if they have any questions on their homework. So if you look down here, I already have their homework open. And so somebody had a question on number 15. So rather than me working it out right away, what I could do is use this camera tool. I'm going to place capture on a blank white piece of paper there so we can work it out. I can drag a rectangular picture of it. Or, this is kind of interesting, I can draw a free form. Like I can just grab whatever shape I want. And it just puts it into a blank sheet here for my students to work. So at this point, I would say, OK, this is a verbal question. And because it's looking just for a numeric answer, I'm going to say this is a numeric question. So you can see what happens then is it has started to receive the CPS pulse answers that my students are going to type in. So I've got nine CPS Pulse out here to type answers into. So I'll go ahead and uh, start that. Also, I want a picture here of my screen so that later on when I go back to look at this question, I remember what it was. So right now, I'm going to type in some answers to all nine of these. This will take a second here, but you'll watch as they show up down here. And now we can see, we could put them on a timer. If we feel like our students are taking too long, then this is a timer. But as I see that all nine students have responded, I hit end. Now what happens is it shows me all of the answers. It doesn't say who typed in which answer. It just shows me all of the answers. And it doesn't even say which answer is correct. But at this point, it's up to me to type in the correct answer. I will type in negative one seventh because that was the correct answer. And when I hit apply, you'll see that I can see now this many students. If you arrow over it, you see seven students got the correct answer. One student typed in negative one, and one student typed in negative eight. And depending upon how many people got it right, how many people got it wrong, what I can do then at that point is choose to work out the problem. So say I felt like that was too many students. So I could come back over here, make sure I've got my pen in hand, and I can start writing it out. 10x plus 25 to make sure that all my students understood how I got that answer. So at this point, I have the opportunity to write the question on the same page with its answer. So I'll go ahead and do this one quickly. As we distribute this, we get a 2x plus a 5 minus 1. And as I distribute this, I get a negative 5x plus a 3. So I have a 2x plus a 4 equals a negative 5x plus a 3. Okay, and I'll move these guys to the side. So I have a 7x on this side. Subtract the 4 to this side. Okay. Uh, depending upon the level of the student, I would show more work that this is an intermediate algebra class, so maybe I'm not showing quite as much work. But you can see now that if I need to work it out, I have the room to work it out. If everybody got it correct, 
then I could immediately realize that I don't need to work that out. But not only do I see that 78% of the class got it right, but this is stored. And I can go back later, which I'll show a report, and see which students in particular. It'll put this in this new screen. And we know that we're looking for a numeric answer. So what I'll do is I'll just notice I have a different window than I did last time. After I've already answered one question or had my students answer one, then I can immediately ask for a true, false, yes, no. Uh, these are multiple choice. And what I want is a numeric answer. So I have to be back in mouse, mouse mode here. Okay, so I want a numeric answer. So again, I have my nine students ready to answer. And so I will have them turn over here to the right answer. Okay, so I'll have my students answer again. And I'll also make sure I capture the screen so that later on I'll be able to see what the question was. Okay, so it appears that everybody has answered the question now. So at this point, I can say end. Okay. And again, I can see the different responses, but until I say which one is the correct answer, which is five, then no one's right or wrong. Nor can the students see who answered. They can just see everybody's answers. Now we can see that five people got the correct answer, one person got this wrong answer of three, and Three people got the wrong answer of one. So you have a better feel for what it looks like. All right, so there's two questions that I have done. Now, what I want to do is I want to go into the CPS program and look at my report. This would be something I would do outside of class. But just to show you that we now have screenshots when I'm looking later. Okay? So I'm going to close this. I would close this. I will end the session. It takes me back into the CPS software, which I want to see a report now. Now today would be the two questions that I just did. So I'll open that up. I've got these nine students. See, now I've got names instead of just clicker numbers. So I know exactly who is there. So let's look at a question report so I can actually see the question settings as well. Um, but I would have an image of the question. Just takes a screenshot there. I would see how many people got it right. And I would actually have each student's name here, what their answer was, including the ones who got it incorrect. So that is really helpful there. And it was a graph. Hopefully we'll be able to zoom in later on that. Um, but again, you can remember something about the question you had asked just randomly in class. You see each student's response. You can see what the correct response was and what the incorrect responses were. It even generates a little bar graph to show you how well your class did. So it's a nice way to just be able to ask your students questions, get immediate feedback on how well they're understanding it, and then go back and look at it later. Go back and look at individual student reports later.